India Skill Reports also talk about the think tank series discussions which were held with more than 200 senior industry leaders across major metro cities in the country including New Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore and Chennai between August to November 2019. and what they have to say is the ask from india skilling sector what is holding the india inc back ask stands for attitude skill and knowledge attitude is being focused majorly the skill sets of course the requisite skill sets as per the uh, industry specific demand and the knowledge the domain knowledge is is ever ever so important to bank on now what are the other things that we can talk about about this india skill report 2020 and the think tank series is the attitude preference for select specialization courses or degrees a large share of india's current working population choose safe courses like engineering btech be management mba bba medical bds or mbbs etc driven by parents expectation and influence this was because of the prevalent opinion about these subject areas having steady job availability with a good salary while the trend has gradually started shifting towards newer courses over the past few years the maximum focus among the specialized university in india continues to be towards technical courses pursuing paycheck over true passion when choosing a professional course at the time of setting out on their professional journeys most students graduates face the dilemma of focusing more on income from conventionally stable jobs over what they really would wish to pursue in their professional careers A 2015 survey by online job portal Monster said that about half the respondents admitted that they had a job that did not meet their true passion and about one third of the remaining half admitted that they were working for a good pay scale and not their passion in such cases it has been observed that many people start to lose interest in their jobs resulting in lower productivity and low to no willingness for upskilling inclination towards white collar jobs unlike other successful economies like the us or china the indian job market did not move gradually from primary that is agrarian to secondary which is industrial and then to the tertiary which is service sector the rapid jump to tertiary sector jobs and related rise in remunerations during the late 1990s and early 2000s led people to think rather highly of white collar jobs than blue collared leaving people to find the later less dignified as a result many fresh graduates have faced unemployment because they wish to start their career with a white collar jobs and not comparatively higher pay packet even if they may lack the relevant skills millennial job hopping behavior india is home to one of the largest millennial populaces in the world and as a result job preferences and attitudes are largely driven by millennials demands and expectations millennial workers have been subject to several studies and some of the key pattern observed in their behavior have raised concerns among the employer communities while they want challenging jobs and almost despite monotonous job roles as they tend to get bored with similar work a report has brought out the fact that an that on average they stay within a given role for a maximum of 3 years resulting them in gaining half baked skills and experience that employers would desire there is a high attrition rate among the millennials workforce therefore earning them the title of job hoppers skilling and knowledge questionable quality of education 
one of the chief concerns of skilling sector in india has been the quality of skilling and education at india's academic institutions it is ironic for a country like india where people place the highest value in quality of education and emphasize enrollment of their children in top skilling institutions that no indian varsity would make it in the top 100 universities list by times higher education world reputation rankings 2019 obsolete curriculum at institutions while the curriculum being taught at schools are dated skills education in schools in schools or graduation courses at colleges or universities lack the connect with industry and market usage it is critical for our schools and college curriculum to keep pace with the fast changing job marketplace with technological advancement and globalization however most institutions review their curriculum and skilling programs often without considering the contemporary requirements of industry for instance AICT has revised the curriculum for engineering and technical courses 2018-19 onwards and has also included mandatory internship courses social and industrial to help students connect with industry requirement this revamping is been done after seven long years in the wake of industry shouting for lack of knowledge and skills The benefit of this revision are yet to be realized but other courses should also be given a thought on these lines. Now lack of focus on practical or life skills. The skills imparted at most academic institutions are not relevant to prepare a candidate for a job. Most higher level education institutions have been providing degrees to students without focusing much on imparting specialized skill sets a study by metal shows that less than 5% engineers have the analytical skills necessary for software engineering jobs in product startups employers complain that many graduates they hire are deficient in basic skills such as writing problem solving and critical thinking that college leaders and their faculties consistently rank among the most important goals of an undergraduate education additionally indian schools have been inclined to focus more on theoretical knowledge and scoring overlooking the aspects of imparting necessary life skills to students right at the primary or secondary levels as per the findings of Pratham Annual Status of Education which stands as the acronym ASER 2017 report only 40% person, 14 to 18 year olds can calculate the price of shirts sold at a 10% discount and less than 60% person can read time for from an analog clock deficient in reskilling and formal training efforts there has been a visible gap in formal training of graduates because of the prevalent disconnect between the industry and training institute in india as opposed to their counterparts in the us which is 52% uk 68% germany 75% japan 80% south korea 96% a mere 4.69 of india's total workforce have received formal skilling as per union ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship data even though businesses are gradually steering towards reskilling or upskilling efforts for the employed workforce to keep pace with the changing technological landscape and the arrival of new utility tools the destination is far and the route is long on the job reskilling and upskilling initiative will need more proactive than reactive approach in order to better equip the personnel for their altering role the recent nascom report states that about 40% of india's workforce must be reskilled over the next 5 years to cope with emerging trends and shifts in the jobs landscape causing many current jobs to become non existent due to emerging technologies like ai iot machine learning and blockchain 
societal and policy related concern alarmingly low participation of women in the workforce one of the prime factors that has upset the equilibrium of the talent demand and supply in india and it is that women have constantly leaving the job market over the past years as per international labor organization the percentage share of female participation in the workforce fell from nearly 34% in 1999 to 2000 to about 27% in 2011 to 12 reaching a historic low of about 23% in 2017 or 18 in a growing population where women constitute 50% of the total size upskilling women as a priority agenda could change the paradigm not just for women but for the society because with every woman who gets empowered there is an associated family that gets empowered and influenced asynchronous practices at institutions across states while most of the indian youth long for global opportunities india specialization and vocational training institutes have not been able to impart skills at par with international standards there is also a severe regional imbalance in in quality of institutions in the 2017 rankings of the 100 best institutions by the hrd ministry 67 are from eight states so not only is uniformity of skill education missing across institution but there is also a serious lack of harmonization in states and central government policy on consistency development and institutions non government and non lucrative incentive models with over 20 million students graduating every year that source aishe report for 2016 and an increase in creation of low paid jobs india has been facing a big challenge in terms of incentive plans and salary models center for monitoring indian economy cimea found that private sector salary growth in the country in 2018-19 was the worst in 10 years since 2009 and 10 wherein the percentage share of salaries and total sales revenue of the organization fell for the first time in 7 years there has been a shortfall in the regulatory efforts to incentivize the workforce through a favorable model and therefore the situation has been increasingly pushing talented youth away from the low paying job markets non availability of a unified information exchange platform presently india is experiencing a massive skill gap where 65 to 75% of the 15 million youngsters entering the workforce every year are either found unemployable or still not ready for jobs the situation is made worse with no information or data available to skill seekers on what courses are available which ones are best among valued by employers what is the average salary expectation for the specific job role etc etc